So AEW Fight Forever Season 2 is officially wrapped up. I gotta say, it's a little disappointing. With the final DLC being the storm is coming and the storm has officially come, that's what she said. Delivery is all wrong, I'm butchering it. Tony Storm is the one and only DLC character that you get in this final pack but you also get some audio tracks to go along with it. The audio tracks are an interesting piece because they kind of give us a little indication as to what we might expect from future DLC, future season passes. But with the Tony Storm, Storm is coming DLC, it's got a lot of people in the community a little bit upset and they're not, they're not feeling it, brother. Now, as somebody that you play Fight Forever, you might, or you, you did, and then you don't anymore. But either way, if you are somebody that has played this game and you look at the season passes and you're like, this is ridiculous, this is not good value, I understand that. And the easy solution is simply don't buy into it and just, pass on the season pass the season pass is coming in at $24.99 it's not terrible pricing overall but it's the value in there that is really missing with the tony storm piece as well what had people really hot and bothered online as this came out yesterday january 10th was that the individual price for tony storm just to get her character is gonna be 12 bucks and i live in the great white north of canada and you know out there it's snowing like crazy and the dlc is costing a whopping $12 and plus our tax. It's like almost 15 bucks to get Tony Storm. What has also really kind of irritated people online and just kind of shaking our heads of like, why AEW games, why? Is that they posted the advertising for Tony Storm, the Storm's Coming DLC with Tony Storm herself, timeless Tony Storm. And I think that's great that we're getting that kind of level of engagement from the wrestlers that are promoting the DLC. I think that's something that 2K should totally do beef up and amp up the DLC and how you're marketing it by getting the wrestlers themselves, the ones that are available, and you get them to do a little promo bit to be able to promote the DLC that's coming up. I think it's a wonderful idea. The problem is, is that Tony Storm is the outcast version. It's out of date. Now, if you go by people that work over at AEW Games, that work at THQ Nordic, a lot of their feedback has been that the DLC for one and two, those two season passes were already in the works, figured out before the game had released. And so with those things being locked in, and I believe the word was that by like November, Tony Storm had already been figured out and locked in. So I get the timing for Tony Storm isn't great. You can go into the creation suite and put black outfit on her but it's all out of date and for $12 it's way way too much in my opinion for a singular character and it makes me nervous to see what they would do for season three because if you do have the rumored of Claudio Strickland Edge in there you're gonna Soraya you're gonna have the risk of players paying an extremely high amount of money to get one singular character and the pricing model to me is a little off balance because you will sell the acclaimed as a dual pack for not the same amount as just Tony Storm. So is it like how popular a wrestler is and that's how they're determining it? I know that you could just get the season pass and that's gonna be a better value overall, but it's really not what players are after. Players are after more match types, more updates. Now we could be seeing that in the near future. I haven't given up hope just yet with Fight Forever. It's not looking great by any means because this seems to be the path that they are going down, which is just releasing more and more individual content pieces of superstars, wrestlers coming out, maybe giving us a collision arena. But again, Dynamite Arena was included in season two at the beginning with the acclaim. And if we go by the wording used online by the team, that those things, those pieces were in development already when the game was coming out. So because of that, and because it takes them kind of like their months behind for development, for patches, for fixes and updates, I don't think we see things like updated Rampage, updated Collision, new Collision Arena for quite some time. If they do that at all, I think it's in their best interest to include that. But where I guess I get worried everybody is with match types. We have talked about this in previous videos, and if you haven't already, then go check those out. And if you guys want to, hit that subscribe button if you guys enjoy content here about Fight Forever 2K and all that good stuff. But we have the match types being the big crux and the big piece of conversation across the internet and people being like, I want cage match. I want all the matches that are in Road to Elite. And with Road to Elite, it's an interesting piece because there are match types locked in there that are not in the base game. When you play through Road to Elite, there are match types in there that are not in exhibition. There's a handicap match of like 3v1, 2v1, gauntlet match, three-way ladder matches in there, four-way lights out match, handicap, 
gauntlet, multi-man ladder match, multi-person lights out match. And if you add it in steel cage match as a brand new one, that's a lot of value. Here's the problem I have or the concern I have. Fight Forever is showing us, based on how they have rolled out these updates, how they have rolled out the DLC, that they are more inclined to paywall the additional match types. And I, for one, am not, I'm not into that, brother. If, if Fight Forever unlocks these match types that are only in Road to Elite, and they put it in the base game, they really, really need to do that for free for all players and not paywall it. Because if we turn on season three, season four, we see the season pass in there and they focus on more wrestlers and they've beefed it up with match types. That's wonderful. But the big, big concern is that they would say we have now included in the first pack of DLC handicap matches. They're now available and a gauntlet match. And then the second pack there, you're like, here is Adam Copeland plus multi-man ladder match and lights out match, multi-man lights out match. And then they give you a final DLC of Swerve and they say you're getting Swerve and the steel cage match, all for 25 bucks. Now that is wonderful value and a wonderful inclusion, but it's the wrong approach because those match types are already in the base game. They're just locked. And I think that would just anger the fan base, the player base that still hanging on looking at this saying you are price gouging the players. Do I think they're going to do that? I'm 50 50 on it at this point, to be honest, because I don't like the pricing structure and the pricing model they seem to be going with with individual wrestlers. Now, if they go the other way and they go the way I want what I want, I want them to include match types for free and they can continue to go down the path of DLC wrestlers being five bucks, eight bucks, 12 bucks, whatever they want. And I might get a DLC season pass if I feel there's enough value there for 25 bucks. If it's loaded with enough wrestlers, if it's a total of like three and it is Soraya, Strickland and Adam Copeland, babe, maybe like I might pick it up, but it's not the wrestlers that I have an issue with the roster so much. It is the lack of depth within the modes. And if they turned around and said, here's the handicap matches, gauntlet match, multi ladder match, uh, multi lights out match cage match all for free just through a patch update i'm definitely going to turn it on i'm definitely going to play more i think it would certainly help a lot of the player base who feel wronged or cheated that they bought the elite edition the base game at launch and they didn't get a lot with it and that the match types are very limited and there's not a lot of depth but let's say for a second they do that they do what we want and they give us what we want and they give us the all the match types for free through a patch update, including a new steel cage match. And they continue the path of DLC with more wrestlers just being added in this each season pass is 25 bucks and it's a couple of wrestlers and it is what it is. Is that enough for you? Because where I'm concerned with the longevity of the game is if they give us all of those match types, wonderful, but where are we gonna be at in three to six months? because I think that a lot of players will say, yay, I'm back in, I wanna play this, I'm gonna have all these different matches I can do, but you're still dealing with some core functionality issues. Also, I think it just doesn't have the same depth that people are really looking for. It doesn't have a general manager mode thing, a universe mode, a create a pay-per-view where players feel like they wanna continuously go in, manage a roster, real incentive to go back in, and replay like this one core thing. It's not for everybody. I'm not saying that a general manager mode type of thing would just somehow fix all of the problems with this game. But in my opinion, I think you're missing that one hook of a mode that gives players the incentive to come back outside of just exhibition matches. Because once you go through and you do a gauntlet match and a handicap match, you might feel like, well, I did it. What else am I gonna do here? But again, don't get me wrong. If they did that, if they unlock the Road to Elite match types, it tells me that they are listening to players, assuming they make it for free just through a patch. It would show me that they are listening to the community and that they are trying. Because if I buy into that, it takes the months or they are a few months behind based on the list of fixes that people requested. I would hang on hope and continue to play the game a little bit longer if I start seeing these things come out. And if we don't, and everything is paywall. I think the remaining player base is probably out. But the last thing to mention here with all of this DLC and the final DLC for season two, the storm is coming. And when it did come, it also dropped 
the entrance music themes. So you got 10 audio tracks to go along with Tony Storm. And I looked into this and it paints an interesting picture of what future DLC we could see. It's also some odd choices here of what they're doing. So shout out to the community online for throwing this my way of the list of actual entrance themes that we are seeing here, the tracks that are added in and who they are correlating with. So you have 2.0, Ryan Nemeth, Trustbusters, Men of the Year, Lee Moriarty, Angelico, Roosh, Wheeler Yuta, Chris Stantlander's updated theme, and Jay Lethal's first theme. And the majority of those wrestlers, not in the game. So is this a sign of things to come? I'm not sure, because in the original launch of the game, there's a lot of tracks in there and a lot of different theme songs for different wrestlers that are still not in the game. I just don't get this. This is the thing that I scratch my head with. I'm like, you are selling this $12 individual DLC with entrance themes for wrestlers that are not in the game. Why? Why would you just chuck this in here so that players can go and try to recreate them in the creation suite? The creation suite is hollow. They can't pull it off. Who was asking for this? Why are you just dumping entrance tracks in there? Is that just to beef up the DLC? Because if you just sold us one person, that, that would not look good. I don't understand this part. If you gave us Tony Storm and Wheeler Yuta and Roosh as part of the final DLC pack and you threw in like the 10 tracks, then fine, like whatever. But this could be an indication of wrestlers that they're planning to add in at a later point. They really need to start beefing up these season passes though. And if you've got 10 different tracks, nine of them are wrestlers that still need to be added into the game. I mean, that's a lot of content and you still have huge names that are not in the game yet. So you can have an Adam Copeland lead a pack with Lethal and Wheeler Yuta right behind him in the same DLC pack and give us three wrestlers that way. And every single DLC pack, you can have a lot of wrestlers, a lot of talent in there. But do you think that this is a sign of things to come when it comes to DLC and what they're planning to do? And please comment below, what do you think about the locked row to elite match types and what do you think AEW Fight Forever is going to do with this if they are going to do anything. There's more to discuss when it comes to DLC and season three. So click this video right here because we're talking about the truth behind the DLC and its problems even further. Have a good day. See ya.